tell, but I love fall. I haven't really done a vlog in a while. One of the purposes of the JPEST tutoring YouTube channel is to now do lives and it's always a dual thing. It's always I'm helping tutors and then I'm making videos for parents and students just to show you guys how I help and how my husband helps, all that great stuff. He's dragging me around, sorry. But this month has been so much fun and I realize it's still the busiest October we've had, I think. As far as the tutoring business goes, we've been a little bit less busy than usual, which in a way I'm kind of grateful because it's allowing me to, I mean, don't trust me, I'm still plenty busy teaching, coaching and all that, but it's allowed for a bit more time to volunteer at a school, to go and revamp our website, to get to know more people in this community because you guys know we were in London for so long that I'm still finding moments where I'm having to get reacclimated. Like sometimes I still feel confused. I'm like, let's see, where, where have I been? Where do I live now? I had the pleasure of reading through six Edgar Allan Poe stories. And normally I can't fit that all into one month, but six, and actually we're gonna do one more. So I'm gonna do a Halloween project with one student where she's going to read one Poe story on her own and make a slideshow, do some analysis with figurative language, diction, all that good stuff. Let's go back inside. The doctor had bought the house from the heirs of the celebrated surgeon. Okay, so what are the heirs? H-E-I-R. The descendants. The descendants. Okay, good. Well, now he's in the the laboratory, and he eyed the dingy, windowless structure with curiosity. And did... I thought I'd just sit down and have a little chat with you guys. And if you're doing something like laundry or lesson planning, whatever, you can actually have this on in the background because I'll be showing some things. Hopefully it'll be just something you can listen to because I know a lot of you guys are busy and the idea of watching a video sometimes is a whole lot. I'll talk about three things that have surprised me this year, this month. And then I'll show some of the books that I'm using to teach. So stick around for that if you guys love that sort of thing. One thing that surprised me this month is the amount of friends and close acquaintances I have who don't like scary things. I was a little surprised. Sometimes you just don't know because for this month we are reading Edgar Allan Poe's stories and honestly if you read those you actually read you know more than the Telltale Heart which that one is violent but if you pay attention to those stories you realize actually these are pretty dark. Like not appropriate for everybody. But for some reason, I've always enjoyed them, or at least I thought I did. Um, so I'm surprised at the amount of friends I have my age and older who say, Ooh, I don't like scary things. Well, I never really liked them much either, but I feel like once you're over 25, you should enjoy it. Because most of the time, it's not actually that scary. It's just more suspenseful or like jump scares. But um, I don't know how many private tutors out there actually deeply teach Edgar Allan Poe stories, but that's what I've had the pleasure of doing. But wait, I'll, but I'll get to that in a minute. One student wanted to go ahead and jump into AP Lang. I told her we could start with doing some deep dives on all these different authors. And oh yeah, this too. I was normally against a getting a textbook on the Kindle because the Kindle's sort of just good for a straightforward novel like page, page, page. This, since it's not a tablet, I can't navigate as quickly, but when I teach, I'm always screen sharing anyway, so I'm usually using the desktop or laptop version of the Kindle app, so it's not really a problem just to scroll through. And honestly, I know a lot of teachers have just used the textbook and gone through the pages, but I don't do that. I pick and choose based on what my student needs or what I find relevant or what I feel like she's going to get the most value out of. This is something a teacher friend gave me. And by the way, I talk about some of this stuff in our Facebook group, which is right here, the parents, students, fans, JPEZ tutoring. I do go in there live to talk more specifically about the tutoring business and how we're directly helping students. And I have talked about this book here, which has little excerpts, which have been a lot of fun because sometimes reading a novel with a student, it takes, usually, not all the time, but usually it takes several weeks to really study it deeply, discuss it, write essays about it, complete the whole story. 
and while that's great i think it's hard to plan those lessons sometimes because you really want to expose them to more things sometimes that's hard it's lovely to do a deep dive on a book but it also can really it keeps you from showing them other stories so that's why i like things like this that show excerpts i don't know if you can tell let's let me pick one here this one was pretty fascinating even though i'm not like a big la person i thought this was pretty neat so if you want to know more about this book i have taught several of these stories and i've shared them with my students and gone over them we've analyzed them we've talked about tone and diction all that so let me know if you need help with it because i love that kind of thing on to edgar Allan poe so i thought that i liked poe and i think it started in eighth grade when usually teachers introduce you to the telltale heart you might read the cask of amontillado maybe you'll read one other story oh yeah and the raven and then that's pretty much it and even that can be enough to inspire you to read more so when i started jps tutoring i actually grabbed this book from barnes and noble and then i got this one for free from i don't know somewhere like a used bookstore and it's kind of like that expectation versus reality thing like i like to think that this giant book that has all the short stories and poems like i think that a part of me wants to sit in my cozy chair or outside with a cup of coffee and reading this elegant book page after page and I'm, oh, look at this, like, look at this, look at this amazing book with like the shiny edges when reality is this. Reality is, oh, I've bookmarked it, I've bent the pages, it's in bad shape, I got it for a $1.75. Like that's, the useful things are usually the cheapest things somehow. I've marked it up. This brings me to, here's the thing, um, Edgar Allan Poe is not really for those who love just wholesome, innocent stories. I think a lot of literature that I go through with students and, and a lot of it that I encountered as a student was very um, kind of depressing, bittersweet, dark. I don't know why literature lends itself to that, probably because we live in a fallen world and stories without conflict aren't really stories. But this month has really surprised me with just the amount of learning that I've even done just by studying these Poe stories so much more close, so much better, more in depth, more in depth than I ever have before. And I gotta say, this is really the dream. This is what I wanted to do when I was in the classroom. I was teaching to my very first group of ninth grade students and I printed out pages and pages of a uh, Edgar Allan Poe podcast that we're gonna read this, but it was rough like it was absolutely it was just me performing the story and them not understanding the language because back then I didn't really realize that an average group of students today in America is going to struggle with the language from this author they just will and I can't really get mad at them about it or scold them or scold their parents now one of my endeavors is let's just make sure that the students that come to me the ones that I have the pleasure of teaching get the most out of the experience, like the most learning, they get background information, they, they learn vocabulary, they're not going to feel lost in these stories. In fact, reading something that was written uh, in a, more of a formal Victorian wordage, like it makes you a better reader. Once you're at this level, I've got a lot of tutor friends who teach reading comprehension to the younger kids and their goal is different. Their goal is my kid or my student must learn how to decode and actually read the words. With me, for teaching ages 11 and up, it's more about, okay, I've got students that know how to read, that can read well, they don't always retain and they don't always comprehend deeply or they, they miss stuff and I'm really good at interpreting or getting deeper in the language with them, in the actual literature. You know, being an online literature tutor, that's, that's a lot of what I do. I'm teaching that Michael Clay Thompson homeschool curriculum which allows us to use all of the things but with English, with ELA, it can be overwhelming because there is so much. There are a lot of choices out there and with a one-to-one -one student who is advanced enough for this, I recommend if you're an English teacher, do a deep dive on a certain author because it's really not enough to say, I like Edgar Allan Poe, I like Jane Austen, I like someone else. It's not enough to say I like that author when you really haven't read more than three of their stories. Do you know what I mean? So being able to teach independently like this is really 
shown me that there are kids out there who really do want to do deep dives on Poe stories or who really get a lot out of it and what they don't understand like if something's just a little too much like too over their head or just too like it doesn't jump out at them I get to show them these things. I think that's what hurts so much about being in the classroom. I couldn't really deeply reach students enough to like ignite their love for this type of thing or or you end up I hate to say stuck with, but you it does feel that way. You, you end up stuck with kids who don't want to be there, kids who are forced to just be there to get a grade. And it doesn't go over well when you love a story or you love an author or you want to think critically about an author and say, hey, why do you think they wrote this? What is the point? What message can we get from this stuff today? Because it's not just about memorizing vocabulary words and writing, reading, comprehension responses. This is about human psychology and behavior, <laughs> that's the name of a class, but it's about learning something from it and getting excited or at least respecting the work, not just get them through. And that's, that's how it felt in the classroom was just, let's just get them through, maybe three or four people get it and they enjoy it. And then everyone else is like, well, that was so hard. That was hard. I would be happy to do a literature class if you guys have ideas about that or if you know students who say yes I want three or four of us to get together we're gonna pick an author we're gonna pick Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, somebody and let's just let's just really study the stories and get something out of it because honestly the more you read I know it's annoying to hear this but the more you read the more you have to say the more value you can add to people's lives and their conversations if you just walk through life not really knowing things and saying I don't know to everything without investigating it's just gonna be harder and I know because honestly I have been that way before I remember what it's like to just say just tell me the answer. I don't want to have to go look for it. It's It takes too long. With the internet around and lots of ways to get books for free, there's really no excuse not to be curious. I'll be honest, I don't remember ever really closely studying The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. So that's what's next. For next month, another student and I will study The Adventures of Tom Sawyer because it's a classic. Sometimes in the Michael Clay Thompson curriculum, he will have students practice their grammar skills or eight parts of speed, finding phrases and clauses, and he'll pull a sentence from these books. And I think, you know, I'm sure not every student in the world has read Tom Sawyer, Huck Finn, all of that, but I want my students to be diverse literary students. Like I, I think they should read American authors. They should read authors from different backgrounds, different places. This one gets talked about a lot. And this book was, apparently I paid 95 cents for this book from one of those awesome used bookstores that are completely underrated, but so valuable. Here's another beautiful book cover that honestly, I just read the online version or I've listened to it or I, I read some PDF version, which I don't like reading on the PDF, but this story is more mature than I realized, but I've been so impressed by my students who have gotten something out of it. Sometimes I have to help them a little with the language, but I think the way that the modern day classroom is set up, there's no way you're really gonna understand an author and their intention and their time in history and their language, their syntax. You're never really gonna understand it from a rapid, classroom schedule. I just don't think it's possible. I think further study with an online tutor like me, and I mean, let's face it, I'm really not tutoring. I am teaching. Like, I am a teacher. I instruct. I'm going to make a video soon about, what is it, duality? I heard some podcasts the other day. Someone said the word duality like 17 times, and I thought, I guess I'm going to use that word now. Tutoring sometimes fills in the gaps that they've already learned, but instructing can be, well, this is new, or I learned it a long time ago and I forgot, now I'm learning it. The last thing that's really surprised me is just from being an entrepreneur, from being self-employed like this with the teaching slash tutoring business, I still have this guilt, like entrepreneur guilt, that I get to go out and do things during the day and I get to sleep in some mornings and I have time to do things around the house before lessons. I have time to prepare for lessons. It's, it's sometimes I feel like my old self who used to go into the classroom and just be in there all day. And one school, I didn't have a window. I never saw the sun. Sometimes I think, am I not working hard enough? 
like I should be working harder or I, I shouldn't have this much time to like think about lessons. I should be busier or something. Like I, I feel that guilt and then I think, why do I think I need to be that way? I hated being that way. I hated being super busy and feeling like I couldn't even pay attention to students or when students would ask me questions, I would feel irritated. Like that's how I felt in the classroom was people needed my help but I barely had time to help them because I had 30 other things to deal with and behavior problems and all of that. All right. Let's not make this video too much longer. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, I've got other videos here. If you like this sort of thing about like commentating and sharing my experience with my online tutoring business, like having taught, still teaching, fun stuff, how it's a lifestyle for me now, and we'll see what's next. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you next time. Bye.